What's going on everyone? My name is Prerag Jithani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale University and I've been doing a lot of these residency deep dives where I provide deep insights into the, some of the numbers behind some of the most competitive specialties um, in the United States. I try to do this to provide transparency to show you what it takes to get into some of these specialties as well as provide like a holistic overview of the specialty as a whole. So today I'm actually going to be talking about orthopedic surgery but I'm going to be doing it in the context of internal medicine. And the reason I'm doing this is because orthopedic surgery has been notoriously known to be uh, one of the most competitive specialties. And sometimes it's tough to see what makes a competitive specialty unless you have another specialty to benchmark it to. And that's not to say that internal medicine is easy uh, by any means. I can guarantee you that some of the best internal medicine programs, which is the specialty that I'm entering, are just as hard, if not harder, to get into than orthopedic surgery residency. But I think, as I said, it's just easier to compare the two specialties side by side if you want to look at numbers. So with that being said, let's now actually just talk about orthopedic surgery. Today I'm going to talk about the specialty and the insights into the applicants that matched into orthopedic surgery for the 2020 for the 2020 to the 2021 year. I'm also going to give you the step one and step two CK scores, the number of abstracts, publications they had, the research pubs, all of that stuff. And honestly, the comparison that I'm doing with internal medicine is more for fun and it's for contrast. And it's not really to show that one specialty is better than the other. Um, my roommate is an orthopedic uh, surgery applicant and I have like the utmost love for him. Uh, and you know this it's vice versa we're like each other's biggest advocates and honestly the same thing goes for almost any specialty I talk about this is purely intended to be an educational tool if you're interested I've done a previous previous video on general surgery as well as family medicine and internal medicine and I've created a compiled playlist of all of them so if you wanted to get an insight into each of these specialties so without further ado now let's just get straight into it so um, the table below right here displays the numbers and percentages of active orthopedic surgery residents. So for those of you who don't have much of insight into what orthopedic surgery is, uh, this is more of like an internal medicine approach. Uh, the way I think of orthopedic surgery is that it's a surgical specialty related to the bones. Um, there's sub there's subspecializations sub related to the feet. You can subspecialize in the hand. You can subspecialize in even the spine. Uh, but it's all to do with the bones and surgery related to the bones. When I had my Achilles tendon ruptured, the orthopedic surgeon was the one who fixed that. So that's just to give you an insight into the type of specialty. It's a five-year specialty, and this shows you the breakdown of all five years. So that's why there's 4,302 active orthopedic surgery residents within the United States. If you now break that down by IMGs, MDs, and DOs, you can see the percent breakdown. So 1.4% of these 4,302 Orthopedic surgery residents are IMGs, international medical graduates, 85% are MDs, and 13% are DOs. And then if you want to break it down by males and females, you can see that 83% of orthopedic surgery residents active right now are male and 17% are female. And similarly, you can also see the breakdown between like MDs, DOs, and IMGs where 69% um, of the total 4,302 uh, orthopedic surgery residents are male MDs, whereas 15% are female MDs, and you know you can apply the same reasoning to each of the boxes in this column. This brings up a very interesting point that I'm sure everyone is taking note of. Orthopedic surgery is a heavily male dominant specialty as of right now. It's actually one of the most, um, you know, it, it's one of the surgery, it's one of the specialties that's known to have the bigger, biggest gender gap. Um, there's a lot of reasons that go into this um, history, not notwithstanding. Uh, but I'm not going to try to take on the reasons behind this. The goal was of this video was just to inform. And I do know that uh, programs across the country are looking to try to rectify this gap and try to at least diminish it. Now let's actually compare this to internal medicine. Internal medicine has 28,000 active residents right now, whereas orthopedic has 4,000. And this is more just a function of... Um, you know, the fact that internal medicine is very broad and there are very many spots for internal medicine across the country, whereas ortho is much more specialized and so it's not as um, not as wide based. So that's already shows you that, you know, ortho has about one seventh of the residents that internal medicine does. Internal medicine, on the other hand, the disparity between males and females is still pretty much male dominant, but by a smaller amount but than, than is the case in ortho. And more importantly, the other thing to point out is notice that um, MDs make up 44%, IMGs make up 40%, and DOs make up 16% of internal medicine, whereas MDs make up majority of ortho. Again, this is this is actually one of those things that people think doesn't matter, but it does uh, in the sense that 
just statistically speaking, it is tougher to match into an orthopedic specialty uh, if you're from a DO school, uh, just based on these numbers. Uh, similarly, um, IMGs also do much better in internal medicine, just statistically speaking, based on these numbers. So now let's actually focus on the thing that everyone cares about, which is test scores. This table right here describes the statistics of step one and step two CK scores for first year residents in 2020 and 2021. So you can notice that because it's first year residents, um, this is about one fifth of the total ortho residents. And as I told you, total ortho residents, there's about uh, 4,000. And so if you take one fifth of that, because orthopedic is, is a five year residency, you can actually see that you should get around 800, which is why you have 800. And what's really interesting here is it gives you both step one and step two CK scores for the people whose data was collected. And you can kind of overlap them. So if you want to know like how many people in ortho had a step one score of 240 to 249 and a step two score of 250 to 259, you go this way and up. And you can see that around 13.9% of individuals had a step one score between 240 and 249 and a step two CK score of 250 to 259. Perhaps what's even more interesting is if you look at the side here, you can actually add up the percentages and you can see that almost like 70% of individuals had step one scores above 240 because that's kind of what this describes. And similarly, uh, almost like 70% of individuals had step two scores above 250. So all that to say, this is where people get that notion that orthopedic surgery is very competitive because in general, 250 plus on either step one or step two is an excellent score. It's almost like the top 10 to 20% of scores. And in orthopedic surgery, it accounts for more than 70% of individuals. Um, the other thing to point out here is that these are 832 first year residents in ortho. This means that these are residents who matched. So obviously these numbers are gonna be slightly inflated because these were all the applicants who applied into ortho and actually got in, whereas there's always a substantial number of people who apply to ortho and don't get in and don't match. And so that's another thing I want to point out. So these numbers, while they are very impressive, again, are because of people who matched and not everyone. The next thing to point out is I wanted to break this down by percentiles. So this is includes complex step one and step two CK. So individuals who are DO usually have to take complex level one, level two, as well as step one and step two. And that's why the, the, the complex scores are much lower in number as opposed to the number of step one and step two CK scores. And now it's the part that's really impressive is it's broken down by percentiles. So 50th percentile means 50% of individuals have a score over this and 50% of individuals who matched have a score under this. And again, notice that the 50th percentile score for orthopedic surgery was a 247, which means 50% of individuals had a score above 247 50% had a score lower than 247. And similarly, the same thing can be said for step 2 CK, which is 254. And these are the 50th percentile scores for the complex level one and level two. Uh, again, this may not mean much, but now you want to compare it to another uh, specialty. So here's internal medicine. And again, you can see that the 50th percentile score, 247, is uh, versus a 232, and then for step two CK, 243 to a 254. However, also note that as you start hitting the upper percentiles, the gap is much smaller. So 254, which is 260, and then 262 versus 268. All of this to say the people who apply into almost any specialty, um, although like certain specialties are known to be more competitive, I'd, I'd almost argue that the people who like a lot of specialties uh, and pay there are people who like a lot of specialties and will continue to pursue those specialties and will have really competitive scores and for that reason you should expect a range um, quite large and almost always the most incredible applicants uh, will exist in any specialty regardless of where you choose it's just that ortho has just been known to be one of the more competitive ones the other thing i also want to point out is notice this standard deviation 11 and 12 versus 15 and 17.3 what this basically means is that the applicants who are applying into ortho are much closer together in numbers whereas the applicants applying into internal medicine are a bit further apart uh, and the reason for this again could be very variable but part of it is because internal medicine gets a large variety of applicants and they often look at a lot of different things uh, that could explain this larger deviation. Whereas in ortho, given that it's such a competitive specialty, even if they're getting more applicants, they're cut off for the scores that they're going to, uh, after which they were actually like review the application, may be higher, which is leading to the st smaller standard deviation that we're observing. Uh, so all of that to say, as I said, this is mostly for people who matched, and that's why these are obviously going to be higher than the overall applicant pool for orthopedic surgery. 
Now let's focus on research, which was also baffling to me, but um, let's just make sure we understand the numbers here. Number of research experiences, abstract presentations, work experiences, and volunteer experiences. When you may submit your ERAS application for residency, you will classify things as like a publication, a research experience, a work experience, and etc. And uh, this is just classifying the number of individuals and the number of uh, experiences they listed. So for example, there were 853 individuals for whom data was available that matched, and the average number of uh, research experiences was 4.3. And then you can see that on average, there was 14 abstracts publications and presentations, uh, three work experiences, or three to four, and then eight volunteer experiences. It's tough to like gauge this because I'm always like of the of the camp that quantity does not necessarily reflect quality. But again, the general trend always does exist that in ortho you tend to have higher numbers of these experiences than other specialties, um, primarily because maybe it's just historical, maybe this is just the way it's been, and so all of this to say, compare this now to internal medicine, and you can actually see that um, you know seven thousand four hundred and nine versus you know eight fifty three again fewer people in ortho given the the less uh, less populated nature of the specialty, uh, but again notice that the average number of uh, publications was around five point two versus fourteen. Uh, and again, the standard deviation is much lower for internal medicine, whereas in ortho, it's much higher because once you start approaching the higher end, look, the 90th percentile of ortho applicants have an average of 31 abstracts, presentations, and publications, whereas it's 12 for internal medicine. So internal medicine is a little bit more focused and, uh, and fewer in number, whereas ortho is just much higher in number. I do want to make this with the caveat that, you know, I'm, I'm not obviously the best judge of this, but um, sometimes there is this notion in a lot of these more competitive specialties to just churn stuff out as opposed to churning things out that may be of higher impact. And so just remember that for a lot of these more competitive specialties, given that these students know that, the doctors know that, and like the, the mentors know that, there is this, uh, this desire to churn things out, which ultimately can sometimes lead to this significantly higher number of publications. So all of this to say, again, not saying any specialty is better than the other. I personally love internal medicine and I could never see myself doing ortho because it just was not appealing to me at all. Uh, and I'm sure pe people applying to ortho feel the same way about internal medicine. Um, this is purely intended to educate. So now you all have a brief idea and understanding as to why ortho is considered one of the most competitive specialties in medicine and just kind of what it takes to at least get your foot in the door. So with that being said, I hope you all found this video to be helpful. If you did, Drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.